Uh, next, I want to discuss uh, the life story of a high mass star, where the masses exceed about eight solar masses. That's what we consider to be a high mass star. And because of the high mass, all the stages last a shorter period of time. Uh, the first stage is the protostar stage. Then we have main sequence life. And then essentially the end game that we'll discuss shortly. Uh, but the protostar stage uh, uh, is not very long because the star contracts quickly because of its high mass. Then the lifetime in the main sequence is proportional, as we discussed uh, several times so far, to the fuel available, that is the mass of the star, and inversely proportional to its energy output, that is the luminosity. And for main sequence stars, the luminosity uh, goes as mass to the power 3.5. So the lifetime scales with mass as 1 over mass to the power 2.5. Right? So the bigger the mass, the shorter is the main uh, uh, sequence stage. So everything happens much faster. Okay, so we have, in the case of high mass star, we start with a contracting clump uh, in a, a, a molecular, a giant molecular cloud. Uh, just before the star becomes the main sequence star, it gets, gets through this instability phase. Then. Uh, uh, it's a main sequence star, but then because of its large mass, there is no that pause that we had for a medium mass star, where uh, at some point uh, the helium core formed, but because the mass was not high enough, it took a while for that uh, helium core to contract and heat up, up to a temperature uh, 100 million degrees, which is needed to start fusing helium into carbon. Okay? The, the mass is so high that there is no pause. Uh, right away, uh, the helium gets fused into carbon, and the star starts its uh, yellow giant phase, right, where it fuses helium into carbon. Eventually, uh, all of helium is being used, but again, because of its high mass, uh, the temperature is so high that carbon starts fusing into heavier elements. And we have uh, a sequence of so-called nucleosynthesis, where progressively heavier and heavier nuclei are formed up until the nucleus of iron is reached. And there is a reason for that that we will discuss. Um, we have uh, a sequence of uh, fusion uh, reactions uh, so-called nucleosynthesis, nucleosynthesis, okay? And the calculation for a star of 25 solar masses gives the following. Okay, so I'll make a little table, and here I'll have first fusion reaction, temperature, and the duration. So first the main sequence stage, uh, hydrogen is fusing into helium, in the, uh, this massive star, the temperature is 70 million uh, degrees Kelvin. And uh, the duration is 10 million years. See how short it is compared to the lifespan of our sun on the main sequence, which is 10 billion years. In the next stage, that's yellow giant stage, helium is being fused into carbon and oxygen. The temperature is two times 10 to the eight uh, Kelvin, right? And this will last only a million years. Then carbon fuses into neon, sodium, magnesium, and aluminum. Uh, and the temperature is 8 times uh, 10 to the 8 Kelvin, four times the previous value. And this burning will last only 1,000 years. Uh, then neon gets fused. Again, it synthesizes oxygen and magnesium. And the temperature is 1.6 times 10 to the 9 years. Don't ask me about the details. 
and this will last only three years. And then we have fusion of oxygen into silicon that makes the sand on the beach and your computer chips, sulfur, noble gas, argon, and calcium, good for the bones. The temperature is 1.8 times. This is how all the elements in the universe are created, uh, times 10 to the 9. And this will last only 0.3 years, roughly four months. And then a synthesis of silicon first into nickel, which is not stable, and then it decays eventually into iron. Uh, the temperature is 2.5 times 10 to the 9 degrees, and this will last only five days. So you see here that uh, as we uh, synthesize, or as the star synthesizes heavier and heavier nuclei, uh, these uh, processes uh, last shorter and shorter pe period of time. And the reason for that, in a nutshell, is the following. For instance, uh, uh, um, we discussed some of this already. Uh, the fusion of helium into carbon releases less energy per fusion reaction than the fusion of hydrogen into helium, right? That's what I said when we were talking about the life story of a medium mass star. And in that first red giant stage, the only fusion that was happening was in the hydrogen fusing shell surrounding uh, the helium core before the core ignited, before its temperature reached 100 uh, million degrees. Uh, uh, but once uh, the, the, the uh, helium ignites, then because less energy is released, we have to have a larger reaction rate. The nuclei of helium has to be fused at a higher rate to produce enough energy to support the star. Right? I use the analogy that if um, uh, a fusion of uh, hydrogen to helium corresponds to a 100 watt bulb, and the fusion of helium into carbon corresponds to one watt bulb, then I need 100 watt bulbs in order to release as much energy as one 100 watt bulb. Okay? That's the reason. And that happens on and on. Uh, fusion of, of um, carbon into neon and so on releases less energy per reaction than the previous one. The same um, uh, uh, with fusion of neon, right? It releases this less energy per reaction than fusion of carbon. So as we go to the heavier nuclei, less and less energy is released per fusion reaction, and therefore we have to burn more and more fuel, and it gets used up much more quickly. That's why each stage lasts a shorter period of time. A mature supergiant its cross-section resembles a structure of an onion. And once the iron core is formed, you know that the game is over pretty soon, right? It's only a few days that it takes to fuse all the silicon into uh, carbon. Okay, so here is the entire star, and then if we just focus on the core region, and you look, at the very center, we have uh, the heaviest nuclei that could be synthesized, the nuclei of iron. Then around it, we have a silicon and sulfur shell where uh, uh, they are being fused into iron so that more iron gets dumped into the iron core. Around that, we have carbon and oxygen shell where they are being fused into heavier elements and dumping them in the layer underneath, and so on. Here we have helium fusing shell and eventually uh, hydrogen fusing shell, right? And then above that, a uh, mixture of uh, mostly uh, hydrogen and helium, the top layers, okay? And what supports this uh, iron core uh, is, again, 
the degeneracy pressure of electrons, as we will discuss. So next time, on Wednesday, I'll explain why is it that iron is the heaviest nucleus that could be synthesized in this way.